BF1 in particular was quite a tricky project to start because there isn't really a defining piece of art that sort of describes the audioscape or the soundscape uh, from the First World War. Once we've identified what guns and what tanks and what planes are, you've got to go and try and find them. And in some cases, you get lucky. You find them and it's a nice bloke in Finland who's going to let you fire it in his backyard. And the upcoming is the 15 round burst. We care not just about the bang and the click, but we also care a lot about how, how the weapons react in different environments. It sounds silly maybe, but you know, if you want the sound of a gunshot in a room, try using a recording of a gunshot in a room and not trying to use like a, a recording that's in a non-echoey environment and try to add an indoor reverb afterwards. One time when we did the headshot sound for uh, being hit in the helmet, uh, we actually took a helmet and put it on the audio director's head and I stood there with a microphone and a hammer and I was hitting him on the helmet, sort of, you, you want to get the resonance of the skull and you want to, to get the vibrations of the helmet. And whilst doing that, the, the top boss from EA just passed by our studio, looked into our room and just shook his head. My wife, uh, Marie, does a lot of the ambiences and um, actually when we knew where we were doing Battlefield 1 and where it was set, she actually planned part of our summer holiday around some of the locations and she's done interviews before where she says she always takes a recorder on holiday, implying the fact that she gets up with a recorder and records things. Now, I'm her recorder. At 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, she'll kick me out of bed and go, go and get the dawn chorus. I'm like, oh my God. So I have to sit out there in the cold in a small French village, just waiting for all the birds, you know, just hoping no citrons come driving by, because otherwise I have to sit there for another five minutes. And then I get back out, I'm going to go to bed. She says, no, there's a really nice sound over there. Can you go and get it? I'm like, yes, dear. <laughs> hey! <laughs> well, the systems and things that you have to put in place, it takes such a long time. So if you have like a two year project, you need to work on it for two years with the audio as well. You can't just slap on the audio last couple of months. Uh, it would be impossible. So this is, what our sound logic looks like and this example is just the player's movement sounds. I think BF1 started with like three or four people or something, it was the small audience to begin with and then maybe ramped up to 10 or 12 or something like that. There have been um, other studios as well, so this is just a DICE, but we had help from DICE LA as well, and then there are maybe five people there or something in audio, I think. Also, we worked with uh, Sweet Justice and Pole Position Sound. We have cats in BF1 as well. Uh -huh. If you smash open a door, uh, <laughs> there is a chance of one, one out of 20 that you get a cat running away. You can't see it, it's just the sound. Mm -hmm. You get the cat running away or an accordion on the second floor falling over. <laughs> <laughs> so when recording fully, I, uh, we usually do actions, so usually we start, if the weapon has a magazine, we usually do ins, oh outs and ins, outs and ins, uh, and then we usually load the magazine so we get a different sound from an empty compared to a full one, so that will be more, less hollow in, uh, in how it sounds, uh, but this is with, of course with real weapons. How many days is it since you've shot a gun now? It was Tuesday. <laughs> you've got one of those signs, haven't you, that says, you know, not number of days since accident, but number of days <laughs> since you shot a gun. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Heard. When you're running, the weapon will probably make some so sounds when running, so a pistol, does, doesn't really sound that much, but when you switch to a machine gun that has a pan magazine that's full of bullets, that's gonna actually rattle with every footstep that you're taking. Over here is actually the balcony where we did the shouts for Battlefield 1. 
as you're moving from level to level, um, as you want all the people to come out of the trenches and go like, Rah! move on to the next level, we just sent an email out to the team and said, is anybody up for a bit of screaming? Um, we promised them beer and pizza, and we got about 30 people out here with about eight different microphones. And I think it was only about two hours before we started to get complaints from all the different neighbors that work here. But all the screams you hear in the game for that charging moment were here. Nobody in Battlefield is standing still delivering lines. I'm throwing a grenade. No, it's running and, and there, is, there is breathing and there is movement. We always try this thing, if you can be authentic and it's awesome, then that's the way to go. Mm. But I mean, it's a video game. It has to be awesome. I mean, we have to adapt to the medium. Yeah. There I mean, are expectations from a video game. There's a lot of information to be had from listening to the sounds. If, if you're paying attention to the sounds, you can hear like, where did it come from? Was it inside? Was it outside? Far away, close, and all that stuff. So if you have a good speaker system, it could be an advantage as you're playing the game as well. We were one of the first studios to actually embrace... The first. The first studio to actually embrace Dolby Atmos in games. And it makes a lot of sense for video games to be in Atmos. If a plane is going overhead, we already have the sound attached to the plane. What we've actually done is actually remove a stage where we would use to collapse that sound down into the standard flat 5.1 or 7.1 uh, plane. The Battlefield titles and DICE titles are known that we try and provide a variety of mixes so that people with TVs, headphones, good hi-fi systems or huge you know, home cinema setups get the best experience they possibly can. I mean, we put a lot of work into it, so... Yeah.